Time now for the Stacy and Hutch Say Too Much podcast. Hide the children. Where, you guessed it, the dynamic afternoon duo say way too much. I won't shave armpits. Does it hurt when it grows back? If there's any ingrown situations, yeah. that can be very painful. No, seriously, that was way too much. Pit stains. I think they're sexy in certain situations. So if you're still listening, here they are to start the pod. Why? I never. Stacy and Hutch. He does say too much, and he volunteers so much. I don't know why he does We're going to get that updated here shortly, <laughs> but you know, you asked for a new one. Be careful what you wish for. That was the new I one. Know, but we'll I get know. A, we'll get a new one made. We thought we'd initiate Alex with perhaps some of the dirtiest say too much talk. Actually, that's not even all that dirty. No, it's just gross. Hi, everybody. Now, obviously, oh, my camera's over here. you will see that Hutch is not here, and we have a new face. Why, this, this face... This face <laughs> is Alex, our new fill-in producer, while Carissa, our regular producer, is uh, on-air producer, is uh, out on maternity leave. And uh, we have our podcast producer still here with us. He'll never leave. You guys have multiple producers. I know. We're, we need a lot of help. We're very needy. The full staff. Of course, oh this my is gosh. Ross. Um, and, 100%. Uh, you don't have any idea what you got yourself into, Alex. And we're a little upset with Ross because he refuses to swap the pictures that you're looking at if you're watching this on uh, on YouTube or wherever you're watching. Um, because when we want to look at each other in the studio, we're, hi, I'm looking at your face, but we're looking away from one another, which is really stupid. Which is going to confuse the hell out of it. <laughs> so, so to talk to each other and look like we're looking at each other, we have to turn away. Okay, so hang on. You want me to do this? Yes! Oh, that's so, 10 times. Does so that help? When we actually look at each other in the studio and talk okay. to each other, we're going to see each other's face. And then when we're doing that, Ross, unfortunately, given the structure, is going to be on the pay no mind list all the way yeah. to the right. I'm just going to, or just get rid of me. That's yeah. probably what we could Also do. present was um, Ross. You can let yourself into the middle too, so we're both staring at you. Oh, there for you those, go. Would you like that? For those, no, because I'm not that important. For those <laughs> wondering what we're talking about, if you're listening via audio format. I think I'm a little too bright here. You may want to check this podcast out on the YouTube machine at KS95Vids. Ooh, look at that. I got a new toy. Also, I love your shirt. Does it just it just says radio girl? It says right? radio girl noun, like a normal girl, but cooler. Oh. From the Merriam Webster well, series. You let us be the judge of that. Well, I got a new toy and I didn't know it could make the light turn green or oh. blue. Well, you know, we are recording this in October. Is there a Halloween theme light? Well, green seemed kind of good, but I don't know what I'm doing. Oh, now it's changing all the colors. Now it looks like my Christmas lights. That's not distracting, is it? I don't even know what to do here. I better turn this off. Maybe this isn't even mine. <laughs> Should have warned you I'm prone to being epileptic. So are you? No. Oh, okay, okay good. <laughs> good. I'm glad you're kidding, because that would be a bad thing. I don't know why suddenly I look like I'm ghostly, but whatever. No one cares because they're probably listening to yeah, this that light, and not watching. That light keeps reverting back. Is it is this? It, no, I think it's that one because when you moved it, it was fine. I turned it off. And then you like, oh, okay. See, look, oh. it's super bright. I don't know. This room is not meant for video. Anyway, so um, here we are. We were just talking off the podcast air about uh, the twins because it's our baseball really starts. We were talking sports we, with me. Which we, we is, really hope that when people listen, by the way, for clarification, we really hope that when people listen, mm -hmm. the Twins are still in the playoffs. But that, we're recording this during the beginning of yeah, the game American two. League wildcard playoff round. Game two is today as we're recording this, so fingers are crossed. But we were just were chatting about um, about sportings. And um, Alex mentioned sportings. what sporting sportings. sportings. Yes, you you were saying something. You worked at some store and you bought. I I only heard part of that because I was digging some things up here. Yeah. Um. Well, I've always been a baseball guy, like Ross, for my entire life, and then it was like a handful of years ago. I just became like European football has taken over my life. Oh. Okay. And the person I was talking about, I worked at a store, Puma. Oh. Uh, for a year in their uh, headquarters store and I got to meet Thierry Henry. So we were talking about like the best like autographs or pictures that you've gotten with people. And that was definitely my number one. And but, you went and bought some shoes so hoping he would assign them? I was so ready because I knew he was going to be coming in, get to do like a private shopping experience for him. Ooh. That was going to lead up. So I was like, perfect opportunity. Grab a nice little pair of football boots, buy them, discount, get them to sign them. Done, done, done. Get a picture. Call it a day. Picture is always priority. 
uh, was told very directly he is not signing anything. He was, he had already signed like, I think a hundred little pictures of himself, oh, so like he's little like, headshots. He was like, I have on my hand, just scribbles. carpal yeah. tunnel. Syndrome. <laughs> yeah. He was like, I already have early onset arthritis from my playing career. I don't need to oh, sign more stuff. That's a bummer. Yeah. Then you ran into somebody, not a sports person, but and a gas tire. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I was in uh, Evanston, Illinois, a few weeks ago watching a go for football debacle for those who care about college football. This mic sure is interesting, isn't it? By <laughs> I know. <the> way. <laughs> I can tell you how to fix that. I can actually fix it while you're talking. I think I got it. I okay. think I think we're good. I just right. won't touch anything. So I was uh, she's a uh, Anna Gasteyer, actually a Northwestern grad. Julia Louis Dreyfus is. I, and I imagine I didn't as well. I didn't go back and look at this, mm -hmm. but I imagine both must have done Second City, the uh, comedy tour. That mm -hmm. would be my hunch. It's a feeder ground for And they were both SNL. on SNL. I don't know if they're at the same time, but they're both an SNL alum. So uh, Anna Gasteyer walked in and right away, uh, two of the gentlemen who I was with uh, figured it out. I was a bit more the skeptic just because, you know, you don't really see them in normal everyday life. We're literally at a busy, busy breakfast cafe on a Saturday morning. Mm -hmm. And after a while, we put two and two together, figured out it was her kind of had some, you know, mildly awkward interactions as you're one to do when you run into famous people. Mm -hmm. And then my buddy went over and talked to her during uh, dinner and basically said something along the lines of her, excuse me, breakfast. Just want to let you know, we know who you are. And uh, I we just, know who you yeah, are. I just love and adore you. And her and her husband were very excited to hear that. And kind of incredible because she's in this, uh, there's probably a couple hundred people in this restaurant. It's very busy. I don't know if many people were able to know who she was, or maybe they were just more respectful than we were. Although I think we were very respectful about it, but she was happy. She was happy to hear that. And it was just, it was kind of fun. You know, you don't really get to see, I mean, obviously celebrities, you know, athletes, they all do normal people things, Sure, but you so seldomly actually live it and see it in the moment with them. And it was really cool. She was with her, her family, her daughter goes to Northwestern. So mm. she may have just been visiting her. And it was just really kind of fun to see. Well, the way you guys approached her, I think, was brilliant. The first thing out of your mouth was, I just want you to know I adore you. Well, who's yeah. going to say, get out of here? Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's pretty brilliant. Didn't get no, the brush off or anything. Correct. Like that. And, and Alex and I were talking off air. It, I don't really know when I I don't get starstruck so much anymore mm -hmm. I, because I, I've been around athletes and even to a degree musicians, actresses, and actresses. Oh. And, you know, that really sounds like I'm trying to toot my own horn. I'm not. But what I'm saying is the more you're around them, the more you start to realize, you know, like an athlete, if I, when I was covering games and I was going into locker rooms, mm -hmm. you go into the twins locker room after about two times, you realize this is just like them coming to my office, mm -hmm. right? This is their office. Except this is their place. You're of business. not naked. Mostly. Correct. Yeah. Usually you're not. <laughs> Usually I'm not. Occasionally, I'm shirtless, but you know what? That's that, that's a topic for another day. So you bump right. elbows in high level society, is what you're yeah, saying? Yeah, correct. Is used to, is? used okay. to. Now I can't stay up that late. Do you know how late you have to stay up to go into locker rooms? No, especially like a baseball locker room. It's better now, but you wouldn't leave the stadium till like midnight. Yeah. I'm, I'm way too old to be out that yeah, late. Yeah, that is hard. You have a, a twins connection that yeah. you were telling us about. Well, before I've told you guys that my radio career started with running the control yes. at my tiny town. So I, I've, I've heard every inning of the, you know, Twins games when I was you're a kid. A, you're a pretty big baseball person, I really too. Like it's in, baseball it's in your lot. family, and mm -hmm. I know you, you spend a lot of time at and, Target Field. Yes, I do. And um, I was just going through some old photos that are on my phone and in my drive trying to clean some stuff up, and I ran across this one that I forgot I had from the early 90s, and I'm like, hey, look at that. It's my dad meeting with Juan Berenger, which... Um, was funny because my I forgot my brother when he lived in I think it was Eden Prairie he was the caretaker of his apartment building and Juan lived in the building and they were pretty good friends and my brother learned Spanish from him and I have to look this up I should know this was Juan on both World Series teams or only one do you know off the top of your head Stacey? Uh, I think just Juan it's a hell of a mustache I know <laughs> And I remember my mom. This is before he was on the '87 team, so the first World Series team. Oil slick back hair and mustache. And I remember my mom talking about um, Tanya um, Puckett. Yeah, Tanya okay. Puckett, rest her soul. She yeah. just passed yeah, away. Just passed talking away. Talking about how she would wear these high heels with that tiny, tiny baby, <laughs> <laughs> and she's going <laughs> sitting with those other girls, and they're high heels, and they're tiny children. And I'm like, Mom, they're young. <laughs> they're young and hot. They're gonna wear their cute shoes. Let them be young. 
I know, but Let she's like, I hot. just, I just don't know how she can go down the stairs with that tiny baby in those high heels. I'm like, oh, you're such a mother mom. But I was like probably 18. So I was like, I get it. Those shoes are cute. <laughs> well, we are all on the twins bandwagon. And again, we, we hope that when people listen to this pod, the twins are still a part yes. of the playoffs. But we're, as you said, we're recording before game two. Mm-hmm. Uh, the note here, all I wanted all season long was for the twins to end their stupid playoff losing streak. They had lost 18 straight playoff games. That ended yesterday, so I, that alone is worth a, a bit of a, a, a clap and a cheer. So I didn't, I didn't watch it because I figured maybe, maybe I'm the reason we kept losing because I would watch it before I didn't. Okay, here, here's a question. My for, dad said it was a good game, though. Here's a question for you and for Alex, because mm-hmm. uh, I generally, this is so weird because this will, this will basically give away that I am superstitious. I really do not believe in superstitions. I don't believe that anything I do sitting at home on a couch or anything that I wear or anything that I do makes a difference for the actual players on the field of play. However, I will say if something is working, I will stick with it. You know, like I'm a go for football season ticket holder. I will wear the same stuff as long as I possibly can if they're winning. But then I believe when... I have all the power okay. and I change the <laughs> yeah. world. But then when they lose, I'll just change it up. But, it, but why? It doesn't matter. So, I mean, I, I don't know. I just, do you guys believe in superstitions at what, all? To the point where you would stop watching. You said every time you watched, they would lose. Well, and that's what's happened. I just thought if I don't watch it, then it won't harass me. So for the betterment of the team, yes. you would actually possibly just keep the TV off and just kind of sit in a corner alone. And, and just also say, I, I would so. have to do this all day. Uh, now, what happens if the Twins made it to like the American League Championship Series or the World Series? Would you... St- would you oh, keep? I'm, I'm watching. Okay, it. I was gonna say, would oh, you keep yeah. not watching, or would you be watching? Sage the living room first. Yeah, and, yeah. <laughs> well, I'll probably be on the air. I'm sure. Yeah, I'm probably because we'd have to be on the air at the time. So, yeah. all uh, right. This let, no more sporting talks. Okay, no more sporting. No more sporting. Fun while it lasted. It's time to talk about Alex. Let's put him on the hot seat. Did you prepare a bunch of questions? Well, here's the thing. Here's what I did. So I did. Um, I did an Instagram story. And this I is great. Mm-hmm, and I asked everybody, like, if you have questions about Alex, what do you want to ask him? And I had a little clip of him rubbing his beard against Hutch, which was so weird. It's a good opening. <laughs> yeah. Career here. And great. then uh, good for you. So people were going to put the, the questions on, on the comments. And that this morning I was going to go, OK, I'll go get those questions. And then I remembered, oh, gosh, that's right. It, it was an Instagram story. And those go away after uh, a day. Oh, so, okay, it wasn't though, a post. It was a story. I, and so it disappeared. I don't have any questions from dodged. listeners. But here's the thing, though. I did happen to look <gasps> and see a few questions. You did? Yeah. First question, your thoughts on U.S. foreign policy. Oh, sure. No, I'm just kidding. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. You know, I did come from a news world before this, so yes, I yes. feel quite adept to be able to answer this. Yeah, you are kind of uh, smart. Yeah. It's been talked about on this uh, podcast before that one of my goals in life is to be a press secretary because I love to clean up messes and just go to the dogs and and turn around words. So maybe you and I could form some alliance together and, you know, I could make you governor and then I'll just clean up all the messes at the podium. I could see that. I actually would be jealous of your. I've always wanted to be like uh, not White House press secretary, but like a I did actually for a while want to be like communications director. Yeah, like. A governor or something like that, because I I always enjoyed the like feeling calls, deciding who's, you know, you got to be the biggest problem with communications people. I'm now going to bore this podcast to death. No, but, this is good. Um, was there, they're supposed to be like the gateway to get answers. Yes, you're a filter. Yeah, but you're not supposed to be a filter. You're supposed to be the one to bring like answers to the, you know, if you're in the media, hey, governor, what in the hell are you doing? You're supposed to be the one to get those answers. And really, they're just like a blockade. You're a they're, spinner. They're, you're a spinner. You're supposed to block people. I would want to be able to be the person to go in and like give you those answers. Mm. So, okay. Right, where where were you yes. before you came to us? Um, Give us a bit of your background in a nutshell. So what? I'd taken from broadcasting, I'd taken like about a year and a half off Um, being in the news. I was never a news person. Mm-hmm. I kind of started with like in entertainment. I started doing like open mics and stand up. I always wanted to be in radio and stuff like that. You did stand up? Yeah. Are well, you funny? I stand up. Mm, no. Real, <laughs> be funny right now. Uh, I'm like, so this person walks into a bar. Um, Ross walked into a bar. Ross walks into a bar and meets Anna Hernotion and or whatever her name is. <laughs> Anna Gasteyer. Gasteyer. Um, so I started there, but I always wanted to be in radio because that was the format. I was, you know, 
Howard Stern, Opie and Anthony guy back sure. in the day, the shock jockeys of the world. Mm -hmm. um, and then I just pigeonholed. The news was the first job that I got into. You're like, oh, like somewhere. And I was like, <laughs> to be paid to do this? Absolutely. I'll talk about policies and stuff like that. And then pigeonholed myself into that. Was there for about eight years, different stations and stuff like that. And then um, COVID and then presidential elections in more recent times. I was just, I got kind of burnt out. A little burned out. Yeah. A little wow. burned out. Yeah. Alex and I will talk off air. It sounds like our path to this building, <laughs> yeah. very similar. I spent some time doing, um, I worked with a lot of great people at, uh, uh, at a cluster. I didn't necessarily love the overall message of the cluster. I liked the people that I worked with though. And just like you, I got to a point where it was, it was time to, it was just time to do something different. Yeah. So we got that in common. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So did you go to college? No. No, that would be ridiculous. That is yeah. the best. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, college wasn't for me. Uh, weird, like teen years, took a weird path type of deal. Were you, um, just were, decided to work were instead. You, were you the kid who um, like dyed your hair black and put eyeliner on and was all moody? No, believe no. it or not. We were like, you no. a skateboard kind we of kid? We like to call that no. guy liner, Stacey. Yeah, yeah. No, I was an athlete who lost oh. his way. Oh, yeah. what, what sport were you? Uh, baseball. Primarily. Oh, you look like a ball player. Yeah. 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 Shortstop pitcher. Yeah. All day. I, I could pick that out. Yeah. Thank you. I could see that. Maybe anytime at first base, you get a body for a first baseman. Big uh, target over at first base. Okay, no, 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 no more sportings. No more sportings. <laughs> okay. So when you told your parents you weren't going to go to college, what did they say? We're disappointed in oh, you, I Alex. Think, I don't think there's even a question about that. I just started working in like restaurants and stuff like that. And, um, School was just very frustrating to me. I'm a learner at heart, and mm -hmm. I found more about that. Found out that a little bit more. Um, later. Probably like yeah, later on, um, to the point where actually I'd look forward to going back and like taking some classes, even like today and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, it's so. different when you're when it's when you are choosing to do it yeah. than when you're supposed to do it. You know? How? Oh, when I was young, I thought the world was against me. For the <laughs> love of God, oh. and it was. Yeah, and, and it was, and so did many of us. I want to know because I honestly don't. I know we've passed in the building. How long have you been in the building here at Hubbard? And then your biggest surprise of being at the Mighty KS95 so far? Um, I don't know. What, two weeks? Something like that? This is maybe my third week okay. starting out. So, um, yeah, coming into my third week, uh, I didn't know. My, like, I'd only been to Minnesota, admittedly, uh, once on a layover in June when I was going to visit um, my partner's family up in Bemidji. Okay. And it was one of the family members up there who actually mentioned like, oh, you should look at Hubbard. I was oh, like, yeah, oh, yeah. Uh, You're like, what's a Nebraska? Hubbard? <laughs> what is, what is a Hubbard? Yeah. And, and what did uh, you think of our airport, by the way? We love, really nice. we love to talk about our airport here. Oh, it's because. the airport is very lovely. It's very, I was very proud. I'm going to keep on everybody's good side. For, we do for the start Every, here. The airport is just stunning. It's a talking point. We love to we love to talk about how great the airport is. Is it a talking point? It is. It is for Ross. Okay. So. <laughs> Did you not see? There's a billboard driving down the road on my way home that talks about how great the airport is. Well, I'll they, take a picture you know, of it. They're just excited about themselves. I mean, you'd probably toot your own horn too. Like, I'm number one in airporting. That's literally basically what the billboard says, well, by the way. I, Terminal two is fine. Terminal three blew my mind. Your biggest, your biggest thought so far on KS95. Uh, biggest thought. I think my first initial instincts were how nice kind of the studios and stuff. I've been in some podunk little yeah. studios before i've been in good ones and i've been in some bad ones i think my first impression coming in was the like they're fancy the, the, the investment yeah, yeah. this has we'll been recently i guess it's been a while now but um they just got redone it used to be down the hall and it was we've never been able to regulate the temperature in any studio <laughs> i've ever worked in it's either super hot or super cold i'm always freezing this company has actually done a really nice job uh turning things over and keeping a lot of the areas uh nice and modern mm -hmm. i know this side of the building had it first yep the side that i spend most of my time on went through and did fresh carpet paint yeah it looks all good. that stuff so it looks good in this side but of the what's building. funny the other side of the building where where you guys are they just did that part but they were kind yes. of they're they were like more well, the last ones, but they were the first ones when they first started all the renovating. So it's kind of a continuous uh, thing to make it look nice. And you guys got a beautiful view of the <gasps> tram out there. Yeah. I mean, yeah. My gosh. Anyway, yeah. I think my first day I got like an orientation tour of this building for anybody that's never like seen this built. Like it's like a maze and 
it's it's like there's different like generations and so like adding. in here mm -hmm. you say the mighty ks95 i was like oh yeah okay this the studios in here definitely kind of scream that that this station is legit and then they bring you up it's like this is where you know the hubbard's offices are and it is straight out like mad men <laughs> I know, isn't that cool though i, I, I literally love asked that. Him, i was like in the little lobby i was like is it like customary to smoke a, a pall mall in like the corner <laughs> here is I have been. Let me pour you a little something. Uh, yeah. Stacy's been with the company for quite some time. I've been with the company off and on for parts of seven years. There are still parts of this building where occasionally I'll get a meeting invite. And you're not sure where And it I'll is. have to go to somebody. Uh, where, where is, is this? that? And I yeah. don't know where that's at. And then has anybody ever told you the cool part about this building that we sit on both Minneapolis and St. Paul? Uh, now that you say that, yes. I oh, no, sorry. Let me give this to you. No, I have not. Okay. No, it's fine. <laughs> but it's kind of, every now and then when I get bored, I just will stand up in my desk because I'm in St. Paul. I'll walk to the front desk, the front lobby, turn around, go back, and be like, I just walked to St. Paul and back. Yeah, just, just, to, to all in, just to all say in a day's work. Just to say that I did it. All in a day's work. Yeah. The TV well, station's been here 75 years this year. So, I mean, the KSTP has been around a while. What okay. else do we need to know about you before Stacy? unearths some fun i don't know if they're fun facts just, just fun phrases yeah, we're gonna on play us. a little little fun um i just want you moved here from boston yeah and you moved here for from love. boston uh, so that means he's not single so correct Let's, everyone can quit asking that question that um clear. what else do we want to know um so what was the most embarrassing thing that happened to you in there what mistake have you made um just pick one <laughs> Uh, I definitely have one, um, and it was a Christmas show. I've had plenty of times where, he, even within like a, a couple of years ago, he kind of towed the line sometimes, which I'm not going to do here. I'm a very safe broadcaster, and okay. I, you should have hired me. Okay, good. Just to make that clear. Good, good move. Um, You've learned a lot. But definitely one was a Christmas show. It was the my my first job as like an executive producer. And it was a bit of a wild show. It was literally <laughs> called Renegade Radio. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Which is no more, probably for the betterment of the community. Um, and we were the only ones on the air that day. Mm -hmm. The one of the co-hosts was a uh was like operations manager. And we decided to uh just get nuts. Yeah, we did we did some Christmas gifts, and one of the Christmas gifts from one of the hosts was like a handle of vodka. Oh. I did, probably shouldn't tell the story. Did you now, did you crack it? Yeah, it was cracked. In turns, yeah, yeah, it was What's cracked. going on and here? And things went awry. Let's say that. Things went <laughs> so, awry. Family members were called on the air. Oh, dear. Now, I'll clean this up a little bit. You say it was Renegade Radio? Yeah. I think of Full House and the Rush Hour Renegades with Jesse Katsopoulos and Joey Gladstone. That was the name of their radio show. The Rush Hour Renegades. You guys don't remember that? I'll never watch Full House? No. Okay, oh. moving on. I know the show, but I don't remember that. I'm too old. They were the Rush Hour Renegades. Oh, I do remember that kind no, of. No, thank jo you. Jo uh, John Stamos did a radio yeah, show. John's, that barely yeah. rings a bell, yeah. but yeah. Okay. Yeah. It was I mean, like that. Yeah. I'm the elder in the room. I just didn't watch it. <laughs> you had to have watched Full House. I went out Friday night. Sorry. Okay. I was out looking for trouble in my own you know. Looking for trouble in the tiny town of 78 people. No, I was in a I, different I, town I, then. Okay. <laughs> okay, one more question. Okay. Tell me about the tattoo in your hand. Show it to the camera. That one? Mm -hmm. uh, that is, it's actually supposed to be based on like kind of a Moroccan or Greek tile. Cool. Um, but I had an artist, I had like a few handful pieces that were like just isolated on my arm. Mm -hmm. And I literally just gave him like kind of full reign to tie them all together. And then wanted to come down the hand. And I was, I told him I was thinking, I just, I like kind of the artistic design of like those type of tiles, the mirrored kind of images. Yeah. And he kind of took it upon himself to kind of do his own work and stuff like that. And then the middle of it was kind of my old logo that I would kind of watermark stuff with. And <laughs> so the A and the three lines are a W. See, now, oh, sure. Now, this is really interesting, Stacey, because I don't think I am cool enough to get a tattoo anywhere. Right. Alex is so cool. <laughs> he just decided, yeah, here's what I kind of want. You can freelance the rest and I'll live with it. Uh, there is no way I could do that. Well, no way. And I'm not mm -hmm. anti-tattoo. I just don't know where the heck I would put one. Right. Well, or what, what you, you would do. Yeah. But what you just said is mind blowing to me. Well, 
within a few weeks, I'll convince you we'll get a matching like neck one on you. <laughs> okay, great. Right brothers in arms great. with that. Right, great. Here. right yeah. here. But <laughs> a, a really a, a good one, my most recent one is, um, so with that that um, corporate store that I was working at for a year, I also did like part-time at a brewery on mm. the weekends. Okay. Fell in love with these people. It was Harpoon Brewery in Boston. Um, probably get them in a little bit of trouble for telling this story, but like my last day, we had this big party. It was kind of sending me off, and they have this uh, employee lounge with like you know tap hand. You can you know pour your own beer and stuff like that. And then we all went to the roof and kind of hung out, you know, chopping it up, having fun. But one of the people I work with had said months ago that like on your last day, I'm gonna give you a tattoo in the employee room. Uh oh. And so with everybody just kind of hanging out. I went down into my skivvies on my leg and did a tattoo in the employee <laughs> lounge, which again, KS95 Hubbard doesn't have to expect those kind of shenanigans here. I'm here strictly for professional business, but. Wink, wink. 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 Yeah, wink, <laughs> wink, 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 nudge, nudge. So that's that, awesome. That's probably my better, my most recent one that I like, but we'll get a tattoo on you. Okay. Us, All right. Do we have time to do this thing? Yeah, or do let, we need yeah, to wrap let, it up? Let's do a few of okay. these. Okay. Do you guys know where the phrase um, to a T, like he looked great. His suit fit him to a T. Do you know where that comes from? Any guesses? I'm typically pretty good at these, but I got nothing on this Is one. Is it an English saying? Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's have you, ever, you never heard that before? That fits you uh, to I've, a T. I've heard it before where it comes from though. I yeah. want to say like maybe British and maybe royalty or something like that. Like to a cup of tea. Not quite. It comes from, well, the first, um, People's first skilled trade, like civilized trade, was carpentry. So when homes were first constructed from uh, wood, the woodcutters, uh, it was very important to when you put, you know, wood pieces together, you got to have them obviously joined together perfectly in proper angles and symmetry. So in comes the T-square. And so that signifies perfection and precision. So if you're saying someone's suit fits them to a T, it's perfect. It is to precision. And now it's just another phrase that we all say and nobody knows what it means until just now. Now you know where now that comes we know. from. Mm -hmm. To a T. To one a or tea. two more. Let's, I'll let's, give you one these more. These are fun. If you put the kibosh on something, it means you're putting a stop to it, right? Yes. And that word, do you know where that comes from? I'm going to guess that's like a medieval assassination or something. <laughs> that's that's my guess. Well, it's Yiddish. Um, and also so I'm not close at all. Bless well, you. <laughs> okay, well, here's the thing. It's it's um, it's an old in old English on Petticoat Lane. There were a lot of auction stores whose owners and patrons, they were Dutch Jewish refugees and they had escaped to England and to avoid you know, persecution yes. for their religion. And they knew very little English, but they did their trading in Yiddish. And the, it was a dialect that was that's made up of Hebrew and German words and phrases. So kibosh is the Yiddish word for 18 half pence or nine pennies. And that was a relatively insignificant sum. Uh, but when an eager bidder wanted to cut short the bidding on a, uh, like a petty thing, whatever they were trying to, to buy, he would just yell out kibosh saying, stop to it right there. So the bidding would stop and whatever the article was would promptly be sold to him. Like, okay, back and forth, back and forth. Ah, kibosh, this, fine. You can have it for nine cents. Can you start implementing that on the show? Yeah. <laughs> how about today? Kibosh! If, if how about today? Yes. Yeah, you have to say it like that. I would, kibosh on the I'd, sports talk. Unbeknownst to him, when he starts talking about something you don't like, just say, kibosh. Yeah. <laughs> and then <laughs> promote this pod that drops on Monday. Without he'll, context. He'll be like, what is happening here? I'll have to do that today. That That's sounds like, fun. Remind me. And he'll, he'll, he'll look at you square and you just go, Monday, 2 o'clock. <laughs> Monday podcast. Check your podcast feed. <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks for joining us. And uh, we will be back with another podcast next week. Bye. Woot, woot.